Hello guys and welcome. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving a quick tutorial about how to install and use the Steam platform. Before we continue, a quick message from past Mifri. Thank you for watching the video so far. Remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell to help with the YouTube algorithm. Now, back to the video. So Steam is a platform for buying and playing PC games. Simple as that. It's the most popular as per recording this video. It's not the only one. There's plenty of others. There's Uplay, there's GOG, there's Origin, and there's a Blizzard launcher, there's Epic Games. But Steam is the most popular for general PC games because the other platforms tend to be more focused on their own products, except for Epic, which is trying to be a direct rival to Steam. But I'll cover that in a separate video. So the first thing you want to do to install Steam you want to come to this website, link in the description, and click this big massive um, install button. So if you click it, it will download the launcher and get you up and running. It's available for PC and for Mac. The install shouldn't take you too long to do. When you're in the Steam platform, you have the storefront. And what I recommend you do, if you're looking for specific games that you want, just literally just search for them. Go into the search box, type in, for example, I don't know, Assassin's Creed um, Odyssey, okay? And it will take you to the storefront. It will tell you how much it is um, and the different editions and so on. What it will also do is it will tell you if a game that you're getting on Steam requires another third-party platform. So for example, all Ubisoft games have to go through Uplay. That's their own platform. So even if you buy it through Steam, it will launch Uplay anyway. So it says it right here. Requires third-party account, Ubisoft account, supports linking to Steam account. So you can link it to Steam, but um, it will launch via Uplay in order to work. Um, if you're looking for ideas of games to get, let's say... You're just in the mood to try something new um, and you don't know what to get. Check out if they have any sales going on. They have the summer sales, the winter sales, the lunar sales. They have all these sales and they will make it very, very obvious at the very top of Steam what sales they have going on. And sometimes sometimes the discounts can be in incredible. You know, sometimes it could be literally 80, 90 percent off. So check out that. What I do personally, I tend to go to the very bottom and you see these different uh, sections here. So you see new and trending. So, and then you have top selling. So you can see what is sell and you can, it, it clearly defines what the discounts is. So for example, have you heard of Divinity Original Sin 2? You right now at the recording of this video, you can get it for half price. So that's a good discount and so on. And then you have popular upcoming releases. It gives you an idea of what's coming soon and um so on and then specials so yeah it, it should give you a good idea so do take advantage of these lists these are updated dynamically it's not someone updating it manually at, at steam it's based purely on sales and new and trending and so on so but it can be a very useful resource because it's like for example going on amazon and then reading customer feedback except so this is telling you what is actually being bought what's actually being played right now and um also as well you have a rating system so as you can see here um 95 percent of users uh, of 75 sorry 74,000 users have overwhelmingly positively given a review of this game what you could also do with the reviews, you can actually leave a text review. So let's say you have your own um, interpretation of the game and you want to explain to people things, issues you had or you, what you loved about it and so on. You can click on the where it says overwhelming positives and then read the reviews and see what people are generally saying. I mean, this game is obviously good, and that's why everyone's giving it a thumbs up. But sometimes you will see other games which are all down, you know, everyone hates it, it doesn't work properly, the performance issues, the game is too short, it's not as advertised, whatever. So um, do take into account the ratings when deciding to buy a game. And what Steam also have, they have a breakdown of the requirements uh, for you to play the game on your PC. As you can see here, it says a minimum spec. So the minimum you need to get it running 
okay-ish. And the recommended spec as well for both Windows and for Mac. Also as well, Steam have got a very generous refund policy. So let's say you bought this game um, like, and you didn't like it. It's not what you thought it would be, whatever. As long as you play the game less than two hours, then you can refund it. You can go through the refund policy, get your money back. So by all means, do not abuse this. Like if Steam detect that you're just buying games, playing them for less than two hours and then returning them, then they will probably push back and not refund you. But in the rare situation where you genuinely have made a mistake um, and or you, you found out, for example, that game you just bought uh, is available for free on, on another platform that you already are paying for, um, then uh, the refunds are available. And that can happen a lot, guys, especially if you have subscriptions to things like Xbox Live and Gold. Like, you have Xbox um, Beta available on your PC. So a lot of these games that you might want to go ahead and buy, you might already actually have them <laughs> on other platforms. So do try and do a little bit of research as well. That do you already own the game on another platform before you take the plunge? But at the same time, what I really, really like about Steam is that it holds everything in one place. So I've got a list on my Steam library of all the games I've ever bought or ever been given to me. Um, you can also wish list games. So you can, for example, make a wish list and say, okay, um, I would like these games, uh, but I can't afford it, I don't have time, whatever. And then you can share your wish list with people. And that is especially useful for content creators like myself, because then sometimes your fans or your viewers, whoever, look at your Steam wish list and then be like, oh, I want really want him to play this game. So a lot of the games that I have in my collection are because of gifts from the my community, which I'm very grateful for. And if you um, also as well want to gift games to random people, literally you can buy the game. Let's say I want to gift this to a friend of mine. I can buy it, add to cart, okay? So I've added it to cart. Let me go to my cart now. And then it says here, purchase as a gift. So I can now gift it to anyone I like that's on my friend list rather than buy it for myself. So it makes it clear um, if you're buying it for yourself or you're buying it as a gift for someone else. Um, also as well, you have the option to reject a gift. Let's say you just don't want it. Someone sends you a gift game, you don't want it, you can just send it back and they can then give it to someone else. It's, it's held in, let's say, a limbo until it's um, either claimed by a friend, like it's given to, or refunded. Simple as that. So, um, so yeah. So, there are also features built into Steam as well. For example, there are achievements, there are trophies, what, whatever you want to call them which are like the uh, trophy system on PlayStation or the achievement system on Xbox and so on. So the developers can put into the game um, or the games different challenges, different whatever for you to solve. And uh, if you get enough, you earn points and then you can use those points um, in order to trade cards. You earn cards. But I am not going to talk about trading cards in this video, but I will link in the description a good tutorial about how the Steam trading card system works. So, yeah, I from all the different platforms I have, I probably most likely use Steam the most. I've got the biggest game collection on my Steam account. I've got hundreds of games on there. What's nice about it as well, at any time I can go into my library, I can re-download an old game that I want to play again. Um, and if I don't want it, I could just uninstall it and the game saves will be saved on Steam as well. So you don't have to worry about losing your game saves if you uninstall the game. What also is the advantage of Steam is that I don't have to manage hundreds and hundreds of game discs anymore. It's all digital. So and it allows developers as well to push out games to the players as quickly as possible. And you'll see a lot of people who say pre-order a game. And a lot of the time with Steam is that you can preload the game just before release. So it's not just a case of the game releases and then oh, all of a sudden, oh, you have to download 100 gigs. Um, you can download it sometimes a day in advance so that the second it's available, it then decrypts itself, makes itself available, and then uh, you can play it. 
So while it's in a preload state, it will do its best to encrypt as much as possible so you can't like hack into it. Uh, so, but yeah, it allows you to save time that way. So the, that's the idea of these platforms is to save expense on delivery, save time. You don't have to go anywhere to get a disc. You don't have to worry about delivery of a disc. Oh, it's arrived late on delivery day or anything like that. It's available for you immediately. It's safe and so on. That's why these platforms are so widely used and widely popular. Um, part of the reason I'm making this video is because I saw a little, little bit, tiny fraction of negativity towards Steam. Like people uh, don't understand it, they don't know how to use it or whatever. So I hope my video at least has helped those people to understand that there's only positivity, that you only have things to gain if you use a platform like Steam or all the other platforms available. And guys, there isn't a limit of how many platforms you can have installed. Like I said, on my computer, I've got, I'm looking at my dashboard now, I've got Steam installed, Uplay, Origin for EA games, GOG, which is owned by CD Projekt Red, Epic Games, the Blizzard Launcher as well, and Xbox. Uh, so you can have as many as you like, they don't all have to be running at the same time. They're not going to degrade your PC. Just open the ones you want to use at the time of the game you're playing and uh, use that. Simple as that. And do compare between different platforms as well to make sure you're getting the best price. Because even if you don't own the game straight away on another platform, you might just get a better price elsewhere. So, But if you want to keep things simple, then favoring one over the other is usually a good idea but it depends on the individual person's preference, okay? So if you have any questions or anything, uh, please contact the official support channels of Steam. And if you have any general questions, then feel free to leave them in the comments down below. So anyway, guys, that's it for this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can watch a random video over there. You can watch the latest upload down there, or you can click down here to subscribe. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.